back to in um, topic 7.3 so we're going to talk about polar coordinate so polar coordinate is just like uh, one of the way to express coordinate so instead of like having a coordinate in terms of x and y so we can actually express our coordinate uh, the position of the point in terms of r and also theta so that will be the only difference okay so what is the relationship between uh, x y r and theta so basically if this is going to be our p okay so the coordinate is going to be inter going to be point x and also y so we know that the distance from o to x it's going to be x unit distance and the distance from o to y so that is going to be y units distance so basically so this over here is just right angle triangle and from there so we derive a, a relationship so the fact that here is going to be ka cos theta is going to equal x over r because x is going to be the adjacent ka c a ish uh, of the angle theta and the hypotenuse is going to be given by r and the same goes for sine for the case of sine sine is going to be so the opposite so the opposite is going to be y so over the hypotenuse r okay and or we can actually write that so if we rearrange this we will achieve the fact that x um, is going to equal r cos of theta and basically y is going to equal r sine of theta so that is relationship between x and y with r and also theta so r is basically the unit the distance uh, from o from the origin until to our point so this is going to be our r and theta is going to be the angle of the point from the origin so if we have a quadrant right here so this is going to be our zero degree or zero radian so it's going to be uh, the distance between our point and the origin and the zero gradient no it's not a zero gradient it's zero radian or zero degree okay and um, basically we know that tangent is derived from sine over cos so if I have a sine theta over cos theta so that is going to be for this case y over r over cos is going to be x over r and if you were to simplify this so we will get y over x so that is going to be in term of tangent for both for theta and also y and x okay so basically the relationship between polar and rectangular coordinate is given by these two equations over here so we have x equal r cos theta y equal r sine theta so x square plus y square equal r square because here if i were to square both of this i will get r square cos square theta plus so this is going to be my x square so let me put over here so this is actually x square so plus y square is going to equal r square sine square theta so this is going to be the y square and if i were to factorize this i will obtain r square being multiplied by sine square theta plus cos square theta okay so that's how it's look like and we know from the identity that sine square theta plus cos square theta is going to equal one so therefore we will end up with r square so that is how this equation over here is derived and as i shown just now because um tangent is derived from sine over cos so we will get tangent theta as y over x Okay, so now uh, polar and rectangular coordinate, they are interchangeable. So when it is in terms of X and Y, so we call that as a rectangular coordinate. When it is in terms of R and theta, so we call that as being in polar coordinate. Okay, uh, if the question asks you to change from polar to rectangular coordinate, so what you have to do is you have to get rid of all the R, you have to get rid of all the theta and make sure that your equation is going to be in terms of X and also Y. And how do you do that? So you can write that x is going to equal r cos theta and y is going to equal r sine of theta. So we're going to use these two relationships and get rid of all the r and also theta. Okay, so here I have two polar coordinates. So the first one is given by 2, 3 pi over 2 and the other one is negative 8 pi over 3. And from this polar coordinate, so we're going to change this into a rectangular coordinate. So I've written this over here. So first of all, so here, uh, this is in terms of polar. So we know that it is given in terms of R and theta. So the first element is going to be R, the second element is going to be theta. So therefore, for this case, our R value is going to equal 2 and our theta value. So that is going to equal 3 pi over 2. 
Okay, so now, so I'm going to get rid of the r and theta. I'm going to make our equation in terms of x and y. So I have r and theta, so I can use the formula right now, the relationship, the fact that x, coordinate x, is actually given by r cos of theta. And for this case, when I substitute, I will get a value of 2 cos of 3 pi over 2. So make sure that your calculator is in radian mode before you calculate this. So 2 cos of 3 pi over 2 so that is going to be given by a value of 0 and then for the case of y so y is going to be given by r sine of theta so that is our formula our derivation and then by substituting i will get 2 sine of 3 pi over 2 and using your calculator so I'm going to change the cos uh, to sine and I will obtain a value of negative of 2. So basically, uh, so if I were to change this polar coordinate to be in terms of rectangular coordinate, so it's going to be at coordinate of 0 and also negative 2. Okay, so that's going to be the outcome. And actually, you can even check whether the calculation is correct or wrong because, okay, remember, if I were to draw this, so this is going to be my quadrant. So I'm going to have a, an angle of 3 pi over 2. Remember, this is 0. This is pi. So 3 pi over 2 is going to be somewhere over here. And here, by the direction, it's going to be 2 units. So therefore, here, if it's in terms of x and y, so this is definitely going to be coordinate of 0 and negative 2. So we verified that our calculation is actually correct. And it's going to be the same idea for this one as well. So here, what happened is that my r value is given by negative of 8 and my theta value is given by a value of pi over 3. So that is going to be my theta value. Okay, so now what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to change this to be in terms of x and y. So x is going to be given by r, negative 8, so cos of theta, so which is given by pi over 3. And using your calculator, you will get negative 8 cos of pi over 3. So you will get a value of negative of 4. And y is going to equal negative 8 of sine pi over 3. So I will get a value of negative 6.9282. Next, we're going to have a look at these two examples. So for example number one, I'm going to convert the following polar coordinate, a uh, polar equation to rectangular equation. So rectangular form. So this is no longer a coordinate. So we actually here are talking about polar equation. But however, the relationship is still going to be the same. So when we have polar equation, we wanted to change it into rectangular form. So we have to get rid of all, all the r, all the theta. And we have to replace that to be in terms of um, x and y. So you, have, so you have to remember all the uh, things that we, the relationship, the equation, the simplified relationship between them. So the fact that r um, x is going to equal r of cos theta. So y is going to equal r of sine theta. And the fact that x squared plus y squared is going to equal r squared. So we're going to be using these three equations and uh, changing, um, getting rid of all the r and theta and making it in term of x and also y. So let's start with our equation. So here we have r uh, is equal cos of theta. So plus 2 sine of theta. Okay. So basically, when we wanted to change the polar equation to rectangular form, so we are going to be using this equation right here. And in, um, in order to use this equation, so I need to first find what is going to be r square. So we have been given over here the fact that r is given by uh, cos of theta plus 2 sine of theta. So therefore, I will get r square if I were to multiply the whole thing by r. So r square is basically going to equal r multiplied by the whole thing r multiplied by r, so that is going to be r square. So r multiplied by cos theta plus 2 sine of theta. Okay, and when I uh, expand this, expand the bracket, I will end up with r cos of theta, so plus 2r sine of theta. 
and this become in a form that we are familiar with. Okay, so what do I mean by form that we are familiar with? We know what is r cos theta in term of x. So we know what is r sin theta in terms of y. So basically, this can actually be written as r square is going to equal x because x is equal r cos theta and plus 2 y because y is r sine of theta. So now we can substitute into the equation. So the fact that x square plus y square is going to equal r square. So therefore, we will have x square plus y square is going to equal x plus 2y. Okay, so this is going to be our equation. We start with a polar equation and now we get rid of all the r and theta using the relationship. And we ended up with an equation which is in terms of x and also y. So that is what we wanted to do for this case. Okay, for the next problem, uh, it's going to be the other way around. So we have a rectangular form which is given in terms of x square plus y square plus ax equal a multiplied by a square root of x square plus y square. So we are going to change this to be in terms of polar forms. So it's going to be the other way around. We're going to get rid of all the x and y and we're going to change that to be in terms of r and also theta. Okay, so um, from the equations that we have seen up here, so I saw something that is in this form, which is x square plus y square. And we know that that is going to be equivalent to r square. So now let's rewrite this equation. So x square plus y square plus ax is going to equal a multiplied by a square root of x square plus y square and now we are going to convert this form because we know the fact that x square plus y square so that is going to be equivalent to r square so now i'm going to change this form i'm going to write that this is going to be r square so plus ax and this is going to equal a there's nothing we should do with a because it has said it has been clarified over here so the fact that a is going to be a constant. So now x squared plus y squared again, and this is simply going to be a square root of r squared. And if I were to simplify, I will get r squared plus ax, and that is going to equal er because a r squared square root, that is going to equal er. Okay, however, we're not done yet because here I have one more term that is in term of x, but we know what is relationship between x and also uh, r and theta. So therefore, I can write that this is going to equal r square plus a. x is going to equal r cos theta. And that is going to equal a r. So as long as you have get rid of all the uh, x and, uh, and y and everything is in term of r and theta. So you are done. So this is going to be our function in term of polar form. Our equation in term of polar form. Okay, so basically every single time whether you change to polar or to rectangle or rectangle to polar, so this are going to be the relationship that you are going to apply. So you have to bear this in mind. Okay, so next, uh, basically if we have two polar coordinates, so there is a specific formula that we can use to calculate the distance so between the two polar coordinates. So if our polar coordinates is given by r1 theta 1 and r2 theta 2, so actually... So when we wanted to find what is going to be the distance between the two points, we are using the cosine law that the distance square is going to equal r1 square plus r2 square minus 2 r1 r2 multiplied by cos of theta 2 minus theta 1. So this is, you have seen this before, so this is actually just a square plus b square minus 2ab cos of c. So this will be the same idea that we have implemented for cosine. Basically, this is actually cosine law, but we use the law in order to find the distance between two polar coordinates. Okay, so now we have uh, been given two polar coordinates. We're going to find the distance between them. Uh, this is, I'm going to define my R1 is going to equal 2. If this is R1, automatically the angle is also going to be theta 1. So theta 1 is going to be 5 pi over 6. And my r2 is going to equal 4 and the theta 2 is going to equal pi over 6. So now I'm going to use uh, the formula that I have up here. So let's copy this formula. And 
I'm going to start substituting using the values that we have. Okay, so d square is going to equal r1 square, so which is going to be 2 square, r2 square, which is going to be 4 square, minus 2, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 4, and multiplied by cos, theta 2 is going to be 5 over 6, minus 5 pi over 6. Okay, is it okay if you were to do, the, do it the other way around, that this is going to be your r2 theta 2, and this is going to be r1 theta 1? So no matter which one that you assign as being your first and second coordinate, both of them are going to give you exactly the same answer. So no need to worry about that. Okay, so now all we have to do is plug this in into the calculator. So 2 square plus 4 square minus 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 4 uh, multiplied by a cosine of pi over 6 minus 5 pi over 6 so that is going to equal a value of 28 but we don't want the distance square we just the distance itself so square root your answer and some calculators will give you a value of 2 square root of 7 and some calculators is going to give you in terms of decimal places you will get a value of 5 point so let's say I'm going to take two decimal places so it's going to be 5.29 units Okay, let's make a standardization. So when you do your calculation, simply take those two decimal places. Actually, two decimal places is good enough. Sometimes I take more. So you can take more, but at least take two decimal places. Okay. Right, so that is going to be the end. That's it for polar coordinate. It's actually very simple. And here you have an exercise. So please uh, attempt them. And please attempt the exercise that you have in your book as well. Uh, you have a bunch of uh, exercises that you can try in the workbook and that is going to be um, a very good way for you to understand.